so excited. I get to walk out with John Cena. <laughs> You are, you are too much. For so many reasons, and I had such an amazing time with you the last time you were here, and we had such an awesome conversation, and I was lucky enough to meet your beautiful wife. And thank you for being so hospitable. And I was dressed as Peacemaker, and today I'm dressed as a giant leprechaun. <laughs> I told you off camera, uh, Patty's is coming up, and this is the only time we'll see each other between the, now and then, so I'm just trying to, you know, get everybody in the spirit of good cheer. Shamrock. Right on. I, I just... We are little billboards walking around, and whatever style we choose to put on, other people see it. And when you see visuals of pleasure, the pupils dilate. And I'm telling you, dilation city. <laughs> right? Not the obvious fashion compliment. As long as we stick to the pupils. Yes, dilation exactly. Yes. Well, right I don't know. You're uh, the back corner got that. You <laughs> You guys, come on. Your new film spares no... Uh, yeah, we pull more punches. I with love... With a friend of yours. Which Peter friend? Fair. Yes! Okay, so Peter and I, uh, the Farrelly brothers directed a film I was lucky enough to be in with Jimmy Fallon called Fever Pitch. <laughs> Peter Farrelly went on to... And, you know, Dumb and Dumber, there's something about Mary the Masterpiece, Kingpin, they're all masterpieces. And then... Literally, I watched Peter Farrelly win Best Picture at the Academy Awards for Green, Green Book. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. special is that? <laughs> and he directed John's new movie, Ricky Stenicky, um, which is so fun. And P Peter really does pull no punches. Like, he, he loves to go there, but he has such heart. I think that's what the Farrelly brothers excelled at, was, like, pushing the envelope as far as it could be pushed but it always has heart, and if you have heart, I think you can get away with anything. That's, uh, you know, that's a good point. And uh, we all, I think we all want to root for people, especially characters in entertainment. And um, with, without a through line, without something to overcome, uh, without essentially that heart you're talking about, it is just a bunch of jokes. And, and Peter does a really good job of making you want to care for his characters and then making you want to root for him. Because Ricky Stenicky is a movie about an imaginary friend coming to life. So it's basically a movie about a lie you're telling becoming real, but it is a ton of jokes and a ton of R-rated jokes. So, and a uh, good it's also... message that I actually go over with my own daughter all the time about oh, honesty. Inter interesting. What was your takeaway? Well, it's like I tell my daughter. Like, I want it to be whatever it is mm -hmm. as long as it's the truth. I can handle any truth as long as it's the truth. Damn, that's... Well said. And so I feel like that's right. the message of the film. And if you if you get to a great place with a lie, you're not in a great place. Mm, wow, you are hitting home runs today. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I love how my parenting and Ricky Stenicky like come together. <laughs> you know, one of the, one of my core values is honesty, and it's is amazing. it really? Yeah, it's it's amazing you say that. Um, I. I you, you, we talked to, this is a phrase you hear a lot. Uh, I, I'm just one of those people with no filter. Uh -huh. That's something that's kind of touchy. Uh, I believe in honesty, but I also believe in knowing the room, and I also pr try to practice empathy. So I do enjoy honesty, and I agree with everything you said, but uh, honesty at cost of uh, not being aware of the people around you and not being empathetic, sometimes that can be counterproductive. So the truth is always the best way, but you, you also got to know the room you're working with and know the people you're working with. And you couldn't be more correct about people who have any type of arrogance to say, well, that's just my truth, even though I don't care how it affects others. That is, that is not truth. That's an emboldened sort of selfish pursuit. Um, and I, I don't think that's the truth. I think truth is a complete shield of BS at that point. Well, I mean, uh, we're, man, this is great. This is why I look... It's like we hang on the couch and <laughs> nobody's even watching us when everybody's watching us. So uh, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I really enjoy that. But I often um, believe that we're defined by our words and actions. And if someone operates without empathy, they are truthfully operating without empathy. And that is their truth. But you do have to be accountable for that. If you're, I've learned in the WWE that if you're looking for a fight, one will find you. So <laughs> again, when, Again, when folks uh, operate without empathy, in, in my perspective, they are being truthful. They're just telling you that you're, they're selfish. 
And that is an immediate indicator for me when someone says, this is just the way it is, this is just how I am, I just have no filter. Those are like red flags for me to be like, okay, you're just not somebody I want in my orbit. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a little distance. Do you think that you were born with empathy? Did you learn empathy? I, my mom is, a, is an ambassador of empathy and she, uh, she didn't teach us by telling us, she, she leads by example. And uh, I don't think empathy is something we're born with. It's a skill and you have to work at it, just like grit and perseverance and, and like growth mindset. Um, it's a skill. And if it's important to you, if you really genuinely care about the feelings of others and you want to try to live by those values, just like anything else, you want to be good at something, you have to practice it, so. Does the wrestling world, like... Excellent transition. Because... Right into sports entertainment. <laughs> well, the way that you spoke about Dwayne The Rock Johnson and your relationship with him made me feel like when athletes talk about mental wellness, like if you, John Cena, this coolest person, this rad guy, this capable guy, a guy who's in a world that is both welcoming to men and women, um, that is a world, wrestling is a world, and you're at the forefront of that world. Do you think when you speak about, hey, yeah, I had these you know, confrontations with this guy, but then I had these thoughts and feelings about it, and then we came back together and we worked through them and then we became friends. Do you think that that encourages people? To me, there's a cool factor there. There's an in. Do you think that that's more invitational for people to work on themselves? Man, that's a great question. Allow a public service announcement. In no way, shape, or form am I qualified to give any sort of professional <laughs> advice on this. But, but, I am in a new comedy called Ricky's to Nikki. And that's on Amazon Prime coming up soon. And one of the great themes in that is about uh, honesty. So um, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know, um, but I do know that uh, for me to operate every day, being okay with the person I see looking back at me in the mirror, I have to try to do the best I can to be who I tell people I am. If I tell you that honesty is a core value of mine, I'm not telling you so you're honest, I'm telling you so I'm honest. Would you ever want to go into politics?